So uh, my name is uh, Ladislav. I'm from Melon Technologies, and uh, in this talk, I'm going to do some sort of battle of 3D rendering stacks: uh, Cesium JS versus VTS Geospatial versus iTowns. Uh, so first, uh, what the Melon Tech is about? That's the company I come from. Uh, we are a software development company in 3D mapping business. We have main project, uh, which is uh, called Vatstena. It's a real computer vision and deep learning driven reality capture pipeline. It basically takes aerial imagery uh, using standard photogrammetry, turns them to uh, geometric reality, and increasingly more, we turn them using machine learning to some sort of semantic reality. The second project, uh, like the main focus of this talk, is the VTS Geospatial, which is basically a 3D data fusion virtual landscape streaming and rendering system or framework or uh, ecosystem. Basically, you take all those uh, 3D models and DEMs, orthophotos, vector data, uh, uh, basically everything. It fuses them together and it allows them you to stream them to various clients across uh, different devices, form factors, and systems. We have a uh, WebGL-based uh, JavaScript uh, client for web. We have C++ client from, for desktop. And we also have the Unity plugin. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, come on in, come on in. If you are there, still come on in. There's some space in the front row. Yeah. I have enough place around here, so. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> <laughs> cool, and we get more airflow also. <laughs> okay, so uh, what are the applications of VTS Geospatial? It can be uh, virtual reality or uh, augmented reality, uh, some interactive simulations, maybe gaming with the Unity plugin, for, for example, or of course uh, geospatial 3D mapping. So uh, what's the aim of this talk or core of this talk? Uh, we shall have a look what, on what are the four options for uh, 3D geospatial data rendering. So at least the ones we came across and were forced to learn something about and so on. Uh, we shall have a look how, uh, how you work with those uh, three rendering stacks we discovered. We do some performance comparison. Uh, based on some basically standard or not standard, but uh, like constant example, constant data. And we will talk about interoperability between those uh, rendering stacks. So uh, first, what are the first options for 3D geospatial data rendering? Probably the first things that comes to mind is uh, CZMJS. Who doesn't know CZMJS here? Yeah, either. People are shy or everyone knows. Good. <laughs> so it's an open source JavaScript library for world-class 3D globes and maps. At least that's what the, their web page says. It's very feature-rich uh, and it has a very large community and quite good support. When I myself did the examples, I got a very nice support on the forum uh, or beat on the forum or GitHub. Mm. From that point of view, that was a uh, kind of pleasure, uh, pleasant experience. Then you have uh, our VTS Geospatial, uh, which is open source and maintained by Melon Technologies. It's an integrated system for 3D virtual landscape streaming and rendering. Uh, the entire stack is open source, uh, so that includes both front end and back end components. Uh, the back end components are installable uh, through. A And it was uh, from the very start, uh, it was designed to be very lightweight and very fast because the front end, as it was developed, uh, it was developed as part of a big project for one client. And uh, the aim was that the front end will be basically uh, facing the normal user. So, uh, and uh, usually users, not the geospatial people, are not used to waiting. So, uh, you just have to be fast and lightweight. Uh, and it's also suitable for the big data that was another requirement. Uh, the third option we have is iTowns, which is a web framework written in JavaScript uh, for visualization of 3D geographic data and precise 3D meshes. I think it's from, and I'm not really sure it's from either the German or French university. Now, if anybody knows, just correct me. French university, okay, cool. Uh, 
It's based on 3.js, uh, inheriting many of its features like post-processing, controls, uh, working with 3D models, uh, and so on. Uh, so it's a, it's, it's a pretty nice kind of small project we find out later, but uh, otherwise it's pretty nice. Uh, so uh, how do we plan to compare uh, these 3D stacks? Because they are very, uh, very different, at least feature-wise. So we need to pick some, uh, basically, test case. So uh, we want to pick a test case that is, uh, I would say, reasonably ambitious. So we won't just render a globe with Orthophoto. That would be just a waste of time. So we are, we are aiming for something more interesting. And uh, on the other hand, we don't want to push it so far that we would just throw away all the stacks because uh, just one can fulfill all the all the requirements and so on. So we, we need to find some like golden uh, golden way. And also we want to make sure that we work uh, with uh, the, all the stacks work work with uh, most or almost the same data. Yeah. So uh, basically, as an example, we picked a sort of a basic 3D smart city web application. It's basically uh, Global DEM with a 3D city model in 3D tiles format, overlaid with a vector layer of parcels with vector numbers, uh, with with parcel numbers. So we want to display the parcels. So th those are the blue lines, and we want to display the numbers. We want to display the 3D model. We want to browse it and see how uh, how the stacks will do. Yeah, so that's just a wrap up of what we are working with. A true 3 city model, a global terrain imagery for context, vector parcel information. Uh, the result or what, what we attain with the stacks should be as uh, fast as possible because some of the stacks may have some like hooks and glitches and so on. So we uh, shall see if we can work around them. And of course, we want the result as fast as possible. So here's a short disclaimer. Of course, I'm one of the authors of VTS Geospatial, so there's no way this is not going to be totally skewed towards VTS Geospatial. So just a head, heads up. Uh, I'm not either CZM.js or iTowns Pro user. So basically, uh, we just got with CZM guys and tried to do as best as I could. But uh, I'm not I cannot guarantee it's like the, the really best possible implementation. So this is, this comparison will be inevitably biased, and so take it take it with a pinch of salt. Or uh, this whole basically comparison project is on GitHub. You can just fork the repo. Uh, there is a self-contained it's self-contained web page where where you have all the examples in different uh, in different stacks. So you can try it either on your your own hardware or you can try to reconfigure it and so on. Uh, so, for example, you can see if you can squeeze more performance of various stacks. Yeah, so that's the that's the GitHub repo uh, URL in case you want to take picture or whatever. Uh, it it will be on on the I will give the slides on Twitter after after the presentation. So, uh, yep, yeah, we all have great. So how do you work with the three generic stacks? Basically, how do we configure or make this example happen in those stacks? So let's start with uh, data ingredients. So we'll have a city model in 3D tiles format because all three stacks, CZoom is of course native to 3D tiles. Uh, VTS Geospatial can convert uh, 3D tiles on the input to some format we use. Uh, and uh, iTowns also uh, say they can use 3D tiles. So we pick the 3D tiles format. We will need a global DEM and imagery. Uh, we'll take a, from from a Czech bureau of, uh, don't know the exact name now, now, but just download the GeoJSON with parcel information. And that's, that's about all regarding uh, the data. Uh, how do we configure this all in VTS Geospatial? It's just like from a train configuration, fast overview. I won't go into technical details. Basically, you encode the city model into VTS style set using uh, this tool that's part of, of the package you install with VTS Geospatial. Uh, you configure the global DEM and imagery uh, to be used in VTS map proxy that uh, 
can be done, as Andre said in the first talk of this uh, of this block. Uh, for example, using the map proxy setup resource uh, script, uh, or we will use the terrain or imagery available off the shelf from Melontech. But there is just no. Uh, you can you can basically do this do this yourself with your own data. There are no glitches or hooks. <coughs> And uh, we will basically convert the parcel information from GeoJSON into MB tiles using the uh, open source tool from, uh, from my box called TipCanoe uh, because VTS can stream like tiled vector data uh, and map proxy, VTS map proxy, uh, that's one of, of the VTS uh, geospatial servers, uh, takes care about, because the, of course all the data or the vector data are just 2D. There are no heights associated with them, so uh, you need to you need to add heights to each point. So this is what my proxy takes care uh, of, like on the fly. Yeah, basically you can uh, if you go to GitHub repo, there's there are all the details about the configuration. Uh, how we configure this in Cesium? Uh, Cesium uses three D tiles natively, so that's fine. Uh, here, because we don't actually want to use cesium ion, uh, because it's like paid service, it's not open. So instead, we will use uh, again VTS map proxy to serve cesium terrain, which does basically the same as the cesium ion does. It's just completely open source, uh, and uh, we'll configure the map proxy to serve TMS imagery. That's uh, again the like tiling the cesium uses. Uh, and here we actually will like pre height code uh, all the data because a cesium, of course, it can do height coding on the front end, but when you pull like a few megabytes JSON of points there, it will take some time. It will basically, it won't be too much uh, usable because it will be very slow. Like when you move, it will load new terrain and it will like re height code all the points that all into this style. So we'll do a favor to Cesium in this way and just uh, pre height code all the data so uh, it can just render them as they are. Uh, or if you have if you have the smaller files, that would be the case, you would go for the uh, like front end height coding. Yeah, so that's basically what I said. Uh, height coded Jose JSON true 3D uh, tile city model, terrain imagery. Uh, all tied up or bundled in the JavaScript application. So for the iTowns, uh, that was actually a bit bummer because uh, through it looks that it supports uh, 3D tiles. It I think it supports only uh, like the 3D objects. Actually, it doesn't support yet uh, like the continuous mesh. So this was the best thing we could uh, attain with iTowns, and uh, that's basically where we stopped because we already like burned a lot of time there. So it's just basically black, untextured mesh. So the textures, I think, are not yet implemented, and we didn't dig any more into that because, uh, like, we don't know the system, and it was very tough. So basically, iTowns effectively dropped from this comparison. Too bad, but it probably was bound to happen or something like that. So, uh, so the performance comparison uh, here. Maybe I'll switch uh, f uh, quickly to uh, to the GitHub. Where you can see uh, both, where you can see, here is basically the the GitHub repo. Here you have the the web page, and here you have like VTS Im implementation and Cesium JS implementation. So VTS implementation, yeah, we have network. That's good. So it loads the city, it loads the vectors, and here you go. Cesium is kind of the same experience for the network will not give some glitches. So again, it loads the tiles, loads the vectors, numbers, and it will display the, the lines. So I'm actually like a bit proud of myself. I made it really look really similar in both systems because it was like weeks of work. <laughs> you know, no one will like praise me for that. I have to praise myself. <laughs> So yeah, uh, and basically here what we did, we just fired up the, uh, we just fired up the Chromium's performance monitor in like div, div console and watched the FPS when you move the map, 
uh, watch some memory consumption and so on. So uh, we got some results that I'm going to present. Just uh, I think like you can, you, it's it's very nice. You can try that. Uh, it behaves kind of in very similar fashion, with the differences I'll mention when we get to the performance comparison. Cool. So uh, yeah, that's the live demo. Uh, definitely go there, try that. Uh, and so this is what we got from a Chromium Performance Monitor, basically. The VTS Geospatial, uh, it basically none of the stacks will run on uh, 60 FPS once you pour in some solid data. So when you, when you move the map, uh, in case of VTS Geospatial, the frame rate drops to like 35. Uh, the CD, CPU consumption goes basically up to nearly 100% when you move, but when you stop, the, the CPU drops and everything gets as, as you should uh, or as you would uh, would expect. Uh, the JS heap, um, I'm not really sure what this parameter means, but uh, I, I'm, I don't think it just relies to total consumed memory, but uh, it's probably like how big is the JS heap. Okay, so it's 75 megabytes. And uh, when I tried uh, like what's the actual like RAM consumption uh, through just HTOP utility, uh, when you basically turn on the initial view and when you turn the tab off, uh, so it's something like 800, me uh, 800 me megabytes. When we go to the cesium, uh, it gets kind of interesting. When you when you are moving, the FPS actually drops down to 15, uh, which is kind of like half of uh, of what VTS Geospatial does. Uh, the CPU consumption is uh, is also a little bit higher, and the main difference is that uh, the CPU consumption actually like, stays very high even if you don't move the map. Uh, I I actually like, try to dig in into more into this, and it turns out there's uh, Cesium has some like parameter that will allow you to basically like, stop rendering when you are not uh, not uh, moving the map, and that works if you may just turn the lights off. Great, uh, <coughs> and it works well uh, until you pour in until you pour in the vector data. It somehow turns turns off this parameter and will continue rendering on and on, and the the fan will yeah just spin up. You know the story probably. Uh, also, the JS heaps somehow higher, and uh, the HTOP measurement again it's somehow like double the memory uh, we use. Uh, so that's that's like the hard numbers I got. Uh, if I like should interpret them or like give some very personal, uh, very personal. I'm not sure if I want to do that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, basically, uh, like a conclusion. Uh, if if I was doing like some like really small pet project, uh, I probably wouldn't have uh, wouldn't uh, wouldn't have a problem to go for, go for season because it uh, really has lots of features and I can get some help uh, if I'm going to do something big uh, or worst, uh, like user-facing, I would probably stick with, uh, with, VTS, with VTS Geospatial. And in the end, uh, the, the very last thing uh, about the interoper interoper interoperability, we have still like two minutes, because there are some like uh, sil sil silver lining to these uh, terrible numbers. Uh, so we have 3D tiles, which is a pretty nice format, and uh, it's it's already widely supported or it gained enough traction to be widely supported in commercial photogrammetry engines, including ours, Vatstena, and many others. So that's uh, in in this case, it's it's a, like good transport for transport format. Uh, through it has like only partial support in iTowns, but I don't think it's actually like 3D tiles fault. Uh, and uh, this uh, little nice thing about uh, VTS Map Proxy actually uh, working as a Cesium Terrain Provider. So if you are, for some reason, trying to go big, big with Cesium and uh, you have some fundamental problems with Cesium Ion, uh, so basically you can go with Map Proxy, which does the similar job uh, if you are not afraid to set it up on your own and configure. So uh, that may be... Uh, way to go for you. 
So that's probably everything I wanted to say. We are quite on time, that's nice. And uh, if there is anybody who can still talk after the last evening's party and has some questions, so I'll help you answer them. Okay, here's the first question. If you could add uh, Terra.js to the check. Terra yes, because they use Cesium Engine and they have better performance because they stop the loop to re-render stuff. So I think it be, might be more interesting to check that instead of just pure Cesium. Yes, uh, that's a good point. Uh, uh, you all heard it because you had the mic. That's cool. I didn't. don't need to repeat it. Uh, that's a good point. I ran across the Terra JS just basically when I browsed the, the this year's talk. So uh, it's new information for me. Otherwise, I would include it, definitely. Uh, Part I would say like it's it's already like partially answered by uh, by including the cesium because it still runs on the cesium and I guess that like turning off the loop it's just that parameter like uh, render whatever false or something like that uh, which which does the job when you don't have the vector data or at least uh, at least uh, to my knowledge or I don't know if they fixed it already oh here's another question. I'm one of the Terrier developers. Um, I, as far as I can tell, unfortunately, um, even using Terrier, Cesium does struggle a bit with vector data. Um, so I was wondering, when you were developing this and experimenting, um, did you get a chance to compare performance when you didn't have that vector overlay on top? Uh, yes, so if I did uh, get a chance to compare the performance if I didn't have the vector overlays. Uh, I think at one point I did it turned off, but uh, yeah, I like uh, with I think with uh, the, the general like f FPS, uh, it, it was kind of the same. Just uh, the the CPU basically got nicely. It it actually it still was around like five five. 10% when you didn't move the map, so it was definitely better, but still it wasn't this kind of zero-ish as with VTS Geospatial. So that's what I can remember, like I probably can't do more or can't get more into detail because I don't remember it. Okay, uh, another question? Okay, there. Do uh, things work and has the performance on mobile devices? Okay, so the question was uh, about the performance on mobile devices. So uh, regarding Cesium, I think it's it's still a front-run library, so you will run it on mobile device just through a browser, at least to my knowledge. Uh, when you go to VTS Geospatial, uh, w you can also run it in web browser, uh, but running it on mobile through WebGL on, um, in web, it's kind of, uh, you will really not get the optimal performance, but VTS has uh, like native C++ library, so you can write the apps on mobile, like natively uh, using the C++ library. So that would be the way to go with, uh, with, uh, uh, with VTS Geospatial. With iTowns, I think it's still on the web uh, with, with TreeJS, so that's again the similar, similar uh, issue. Okay, that was the question. Okay. So, in terms of performance, it says it's very interesting, but in terms of functionality, do you have uh, some comparison, over comparison between these three products? Okay, so uh, the question was, uh, like, w performance in one thing, and what, uh, what about the functionality? Uh, yeah, that's, that's why I picked uh, performance comparison, because... <laughs> <laughs> Like, uh, not, not that we like lack the functionality. For example, the VTS Geospatial has uh, like tons of geographical functionality based on the vector data. Like, Cesium can't even uh, actually like stream vector vector tiles, as as at least to my knowledge. I'm not sure if they already support it. I think there was a ticket for that. I'm not sure how far they get. But uh, with with VTS, you have you have these like tons of uh, uh, cartographical functionality. Uh, Andre had like two talks about that, mm, and uh, of course, like Cesium has uh, many features. Like uh, you can you can basically play with all the objects that you have in memory. 
but it's come it it comes with with this cost basically and uh, it may come uh, with this cost all, also when you don't actually like use those features which is a kind of it's I, I would say it's not optimal behavior like I, I like the approach like uh, pay for what you use don't pay for what you don't use so that's it but uh, I, I definitely give it to see zoom that it has uh, uh, more more like features on the like playing with the rendering and so on so yeah yeah uh, what is the configuration of the uh, hardware on which you, did you test the performance i mean uh, especially the, the processor gpu and uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay so the question was uh, what's the what's the hardware configuration where i did test i did it on this very uh, very laptop uh, i think it has uh, I'm not sure if it has integrated. Uh, it probably doesn't have integrated GPU. Uh, it's like eight gigabytes of RAM, and uh, and uh, I'm not sure about the CPU now. But it's some kind of like higher end, higher end laptop. Uh, so it's but it's not desktop, uh, but it's it's high end laptop. Uh, but it's not like this office desktop or office laptop. I think it's it's like the upper upper class of of the hardware. Okay. Any more questions? I'm not sure if we have some time. Yeah, we have to. Probably not. Not sure. Not sure. So, if there are. Okay, so maybe one last question. Okay. Uh, I was wondering why you didn't include Nasebe Perbin the API in this comparison. I know that you cannot uh, visualize 3D city models with Nasebe Perbin, but it is one of the prominent examples, I believe, in among the virtual globe APIs for web. So, so the question was why didn't we include NASA Web Whirlwind? Yeah. Uh, so it's it's mostly as, as you said, like it doesn't support uh, the 3D, and it's it's like the major part of of the presentation for us. So. Uh, like we, as I said, like we could we could uh, make an example, uh, like just just. I never used the NASA web problem, so I I can't really tell. So I'm sorry in that. Okay, so. Thank you for your attention. I'm sure we are just on time, so thank you.